Hi there. We're going to do something a little different today. We're going to be working on what seems like an art project, but is really a geometry math project. We're going to be doing tessellations. Tessellation is kind of tough to spell. There are two S's and two L's in the middle. So I'm first going to have you get your supplies and get yourself organized. Here's what you'll need. You'll need a pair of scissors. Any scissors will do as long as they can cut through cardboard, thin cardboard. And then the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need a pencil and something darker, maybe a Sharpie or a, a Crayola marker, something like that. You're going to want some post-it notes, at least one post-it note. Uh, you could use a note card. That's up to you. But what I'm using uh, is Kashi, what is this? Cinnamon Harvest Cereal. Have you ever tried this? It's really good. Uh, anyway, I just, I took a cereal box and I just kind of opened it up. I tried not to bend too much of it. And the reason is, this is nice and stiff. And when you're making a tessellation, the best thing to use is a stiff piece of paper, like cardstock. But you probably don't have any cardstock around your house. So that's why I said you could use a note card. Note cards are a little stiffer than regular paper, but it'll work even better if you have something a little thicker. I wouldn't use a shoe box. Those are usually a little too thick. But a cracker box, I have one of those too. Something like that. A cookie box, or better yet, a cereal box would be just right. And then you're going to need some sort of tape. Scotch tape, masking tape. I wouldn't use duct tape. It gets a little hard to use. I have some orange masking tape. You don't have to use colored tape. Any tape that will hold pieces together. And then um, a piece of blank paper. It could be lined paper. It could be notebook paper. But this will look best if it's on a piece of blank white paper because it is an art project. I'm sure you have some from doing your art projects with Miss Friends, whoever your art teacher is. So those are the supplies you need. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of walk you through this step by step. We're going to be doing what's called a translation tessellation. And translation is a word which in language means to take a word or phrase from one language and turn it into another one. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be translating a little piece of a square to the other side of the square. And then basically in geometry, Translation means to slide something. So sometimes people will refer to it as a slide, but the technical term is translation. So we will be sliding something. And so let's begin. If you don't want to cut apart a box, that's okay. If you're going to use a note card, you may use a note card. We want to start with a square, though. And so I want you to peel off one of your post-it notes. Now, the post-it note is way too flimsy to use to make a tessellation. So we're just using it to make a square. So I'm going to tilt my camera so you can now see what I'm doing. So I am going to, let's see, let's get back. Okay, I'm going to put this post it note right on here. And I'm just using it to measure out a square. So now I'm going to use pencil and marker and I'm going to just do that, and then I'll take this off of there. And then I'm going to cut that very carefully. So now I have a square. Okay, it's nice and stiff. So I could use this, but like I said, what I prefer because it's even more stiff is this cardboard. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Now we already have some nice uh, straight line segments marked. So I'm instead of having to cut four, I'm just going to put this into a corner that's already there. That'll just help me later. And we have to get this as close to perfect square as possible when we cut it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully, I'm going to use Sharpie. You could use your pencil. You could use a pen. You could use uh, Crayola, Rose Art, whatever markers you have. And we're just very carefully tracing the square as careful as you can. It's real important that you start as a square. There. Looks pretty good. So then carefully we take our scissors and I picked a spot where I could just get the scissors in right there and I'm going to try to cut just the inside of where I drew the marker. Not the outside. I don't actually care if the marker's on my thing or not. 
I just want it to be consistent. So I'm going to choose to cut right along the inside of my marker line, slowly, slowly and carefully. Ooh, this one's a little hard to start. Obviously, growing up, you know, big adult scissors work better, but they're also uh, a little more dangerous. If you slip, you know, you could take off a finger. So yeah, I'm going to cut that a little long so then I can do this. So you want to be really careful. And this is a fine part to have somebody help you with, too. Have a mom or dad help you cut out the square. No big deal. So then I have a square. Is it perfect? Well, pretty close. And that will be helpful. So now I'm going to get this extra cardboard out of the way. And I'm going to show you how to do it two different ways. I'm going to, I'm going to keep my little note card one. And I'm going to use this one. So for a translation, what we're going to do is we're going to use something called and this is kind of fun, the nibbling technique. So think about this. When you nibble on something, say a sandwich or a cookie, what you do is you take a little bit off one side of it, right? You just kind of use your teeth to just take a little. You don't take a gigantic piece. We're going to do that. We're going to take a nibble. And so I'm going to start with a pencil. I'm not, I'm not starting with my Sharpie. I'm going to come back to my marker. I'm going to start with the pencil. And what you're going to do is you're going to pick two corners of this. I'm going to choose this corner here and this corner. And I'm going to draw a shape from one corner to the other. It doesn't matter what it is as long as it touches that corner and then touches that corner. I could just draw I could draw a semicircle like a rainbow. And that would work fine. That's not what I want to do. But that would work fine. You could do a zigzag. You could do uh, like a triangle shape. I'm going to do something that is just a little triangle and a little curve. You don't want to make it too complicated because you need to cut it out and you don't want to um, make mistakes. So the important thing here is that it touches this corner and it touches this corner. It has to touch two corners and only two corners. It shouldn't touch this side. It shouldn't touch this side. It shouldn't touch this side. So when we cut out this nibble, it's going to be a hole, but it's only going to be a hole in that one side of the square. So now I'm going to very carefully cut it. And again, if you don't feel that you're that good with scissors, oop, now I have to make a sharp turn. I should have made an easier, I should have made that curve. Darn. Uh, if you feel like getting help from an adult, you go ahead and get help from an adult or somebody who's better with scissors. You don't want to mangle this thing after you spend all that time cutting out your cardboard. And you also don't want to hurt your finger. You definitely don't want to have a scissors accident. Okay, this is... <laughs> okay, so curves and tight zigzags might not be the best ideas. Here we go. Right down to that corner. Okay. So now... What we're going to do is slide that back in and see where it goes. Okay, see, that's basically a nibble. If this were a cookie, that would be a nibble right off that side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to slide it. We're going to translate it. And we're going to go directly across the shape. Oop, I'll move my hand. As you can see, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not used to doing this. So I'm going to go directly across. I'm going to slide it directly across. Okay, so if I hold this up, you'll see. Let me the camera up a little, directly across. So if I moved it back over, it would fit perfectly. And then I just slide it like this. And now I'm going to tape it. I have to make sure my two corners are lined up perfectly. And when I say perfectly, what I mean is perfectly. You do not want a little overlap. I need to get the camera back on. You do not want it to be a little too far or a little too short. You want it to be exact. This is another reason to use a cereal box or something because it's thick enough that it's easy to, to see exactly where it fits. If you just use a note card, it's not going to be as easy to make it perfect. So we're going to use our tape. How much tape? Enough so that it will not slide. The important thing about the tape is it, it can't go over any of the edges because we're going to be tracing the edges. And so we need them to be very traceable. Okay, there we go. So we're going to use a similar technique uh, all three days. So once you master the technique for this one, you'll be able to use that same technique for the other two days. 
So this is the most basic kind of tessellation. I do, that looks pretty cool. So I'm just gonna double check that all the corners are lined up perfectly, all right? That I have this the right way so I didn't like flip it or anything. Okay, so now comes the fun part. Well, it's all fun. We're going to start tracing it. Let's see which side. It doesn't matter which side. My cardboard bends a little, so. Okay, so for this one, you're going to want to use the pencil. And the reason is it's easy to slip. And if you slip with marker, uh, this is the final draft. This paper is the artwork. So you could, if you want, you could line it up along the bottom. In fact, I think I might do that. I'm just going to pick a spot or you could do it at an angle. It would look cool too at an angle. In fact, why don't I show you what it would look like at an angle? So I'm going to, I'm going to use this hand, make sure it's working out. One and two and three and one, two. Okay. I'm going to hold this very tight because if we're doing this and it slips, oh, good grief. Okay. So now I'm going to, I'm going to trace it. I'm going to be as exact as I can because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sliding this thing and fitting it in to the puzzle piece on the other side. And so we want the puzzle pieces to be lined up perfectly. Now, when you get to this point, you need to maybe just move the hand, hold that, hold it down the whole time, keep pinching it down. And this is a point where you're probably going to make some mistakes. You're probably going to slip and have to line it up again. Oops. Now, if that happens, the nice thing is you've drawn some of it, and just like a puzzle, you can figure out where it goes. You just have to fit it right back in, get it as perfect as you can, and then hold it down so that you can access the parts you haven't traced yet. Yeah, I would definitely not use a note card. I would definitely use a box like this. That does not look cool. Yeah, it looks cool, but it's going to look even cooler when I do this. Now I take this and I slide it over here to where these fit like a puzzle piece here. Oh yeah, this is nice. Okay, and then I'm going to hold it tightly as I trace this. Now what you'll notice is that you go off the edge of the page and that's how it should be because some of the design just kind of continues off the edge of the page like a wallpaper or like some other you know, pattern on a shirt or something. When it gets to the edge, the pattern doesn't stop. It just continues off the edge. Yeah. And then I'm going to go over here, do the same thing. Okay, and over here, do the same thing. So you can see this part takes a while, but you know, might be a good time to turn on some music in the background. Maybe listen to a, a read aloud or an audio book. Maybe talk to a friend while you're doing it. This would be a time to call a friend and say, hey, how's it going? You doing your tessellation? Yeah, me too. So what did you draw? And just kind of blah, blah, blah while you're working. This is a total mindless thing while you're doing it to do something else. You could, I wouldn't turn on something you want to watch in the background. I wouldn't turn on the TV or a YouTube video, but some music, a podcast, talk to your mom, talk to your brother. I would not let your cat nearby while you're doing this. <laughs> Dogs are one thing with their wet noses sticking in, but a cat would ruin it okay and then at this point i'm gonna line this up right over the edge here and just kind of show where these would go there it's kind of tricky you just do your best for that and so i'm going to line this up again and finish this part of the page now if you feel super confident you could do this in marker once you get the hang of it once you know how to press so that nothing wiggles. Because in the end, it would be cool to go over these in marker. I was just worried at the beginning about you slipping. But you could start doing it in marker. 
I'm just going to continue doing mine in pencil because this is our first one and I'm just getting warmed up, you know. Okay, so I'm realizing that I didn't have a perfect square when I traced and then cut. It wasn't perfect. It was close, but it doesn't line up perfectly. So you can see when I get here, I do have like a little gap there. And that gap's okay. I'm just going to kind of fill it in. I'm almost done. And as you can see, this is making a really cool design. I'm just going to finish it up here, and then I'll show you my final product. One way, if you don't want to do quite so much, is you could start with a smaller piece of paper. You could start by, um, you know, maybe folding this and just having a, like a square piece of paper or something. I think I've got a little bit left here. you got to look and just make sure there isn't any place that you forgot. Like, I almost stopped, and I had this one more spot to fill in. Okay. Yeah, this looks done. So you can see this design. Look at that. And I could color them in. I could choose to color them all the same color, or I could color them alternating colors, like red, blue, white, red, blue, white. Um, you could do every one a different color. You could do cool things like that. All right, so that's what we call a translation or a slide tessellation. Now I'm going to show you another way we're just going to, this is a bonus. I don't expect you to do this, but this is, this is a cool thing you can do. If you wanted, you could take this and you could do something to one of the other sides, either this side or this side. So basically you're cutting either one side and moving it over, which we did, or you can cut two sides, um, but those have to be like one of these two parallel sides and then one of these two parallel sides. So I'm just going to mess around. I'm going to do this one and I'm going to do a simple, I have to start at this corner again. And I'm, this time I'm going to make something easy, easy to cut. I'm going to make a curve. So see what I did? I did it on um, one of the uncut sides. And I'm just I'm messing around a little bit. It has to go from corner to corner. It's very important has to go from one corner all the way to the other corner and down and then watch this I'm going to take it oh, let me get that little piece of box okay, I'm going to take it I'm going to slide it across right because it's a slide slide it across and I'm going to tape it on to the exact opposite side so again let's see what I did here probably easier to do this before you tape Cut it out, I slide it across, and I tape it exactly from one corner to the other corner. It has to be exact. And as you'll see, this makes a little bit cooler of a shape. And then I'll, I won't will do the whole tracing and bore you to death. Now you have to be real careful with the tape. You don't want to use too much tape in one spot. You might need smaller pieces. That's why I like masking tape instead of scotch tape. But any tape will do. Because you really, really, really can't have it go over the edge, right? Because you're trying to trace the edge, and that wouldn't work. Okay, well, this isn't perfect, because look at this. You can see how there's, there's like a gap in the middle here. Well, that is not ideal. That might mess me up. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to try to get some tape on there to stiffen it. Ooh, my tape's right over the edge. I have to kind of smooth that out. I don't want to be tracing tape. I do not want to be tracing tape. That will not work well. Get the tape off the edge. Come on, tape. Don't go to the edge. Boy, I do not have a future as one of those YouTube craft people, do I? Okay, but now look. Now my shape's even different. So I can do this on a new sheet, but I'm just going to do it on the back of this. And this time I'm going to see what happens if I get gutsy. I'm going to try doing it with a sharpie. That's what all those YouTube art people do. I just, I have to be really careful. I do not want to slip because I will have to start over or find some whiteout. And I do not have any whiteout. So I'm going to go, I'm going to hold it very tightly, very slowly. You do not want to slip. You do not want to have to start over. When you get a Sharpie, oh, my Sharpie's going to bleed through to the other side of the paper too, isn't it? To not think this through. You could use other paper too. You could trace it onto um, watercolor or sketch paper. You could do it onto 
construction paper. You could do it on graph paper. That would look cool too. Wow, look at that cool shape. Now, when you look at artists like um, M.C. Escher, they found a way, probably through a ton of experimentation, to turn these into things that actually look like things, like a bird or a face or, you know, all different kinds of things. That is why they are the famous artists, and we are the people just messing around watching a YouTube video, right? If you want to learn how to do those very fancy things, then I suggest spending hours and hours and tens and dozens and hundreds and maybe thousands of hours working on it just like those artists did. Because professional artists aren't just people who are good at something. They're people who spend crazy amounts of time practicing it and getting better and learning through the mistakes and learning through their successes. And so if you want to get good at something, yeah, it's good to have some natural talent, sure, and it's good to get somebody good teaching you. But in the end, it's sitting your butt down and just doing it and making a lot of mistakes and getting better and better and better as you go. That's how you master something. That's how you improve at something. And so here I go. You can see this. I'm not going to do any more. I'm just going to do this one. This is looking even cooler. So this is still a translation or slide. It's just that instead of chopping out one side of the shape, I chopped out two. So if you finish the first one and you're like, oh, that was too easy, I want to mix it up, try this. I could keep going to the edges of the paper, but um, I want to give you a chance to go do your stuff. Wow, that's a cool design. I like that even better. The other way, yeah, my Sharpie was bleeding through. This way is cool. And I especially like that I did it at an angle. This one also looks cool. So those are the tools you need, and that's how to do it. And I think you'll have fun doing it. When you're finished, you could color it in. You don't have to. If you're coloring something that's a larger space like this, uh, marker is not necessarily the best way to do that. Because I think we all know marker. It's just hard to cover a lot of space with marker. Crayon, crayon actually works really well for that. Um, a lot of people don't have crayons sitting around. Colored pencil works well, but you have to lay the pencil down kind of. Do I have a colored pencil here? No. You know, you, you lay the pencil down kind of on the side, shade it kind of like that. Um, and then paint, you know, watercolor paint, depending how flimsy your paper is. But especially if you did this with Sharpie, not if you did it with a washable marker. The water from the watercolor paint would just smear the marker. But if you used a permanent marker like a Sharpie, watercolor paint would look amazing on something like this. But you don't have to color it at all. So have fun. Uh, follow the directions and have fun tessellating.